Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. This episode is another part of our mobile home series. This is our third technique on insulating attic spaces in a mobile home. We'll rejoin Edgar and his crew in Jamestown, North Dakota. Other episodes have covered drilling through the roof, drilling through the ceiling, and now Edgar and his crew will show us how to lift the lid on a mobile home so we can blow in that attic insulation. I'm Edgar Steam. I'm the housing supervisor for Community Action Region 6 out of Jamestown, North Dakota. Okay, here we're gonna show how we insulate a roof. Um, we got our scaffolding set up. We set it up enough so we can cover at least one third of the home at a time. Keeps the production going pretty smooth. Uh, Nick up there is taking off the little rain channel. They're taking screws out of the roof tin and they'll lift that whole section of roof up. Um, Mike over there is in the lead there. He's cleaning off some of the caulking. They'll have to have that clean and ready to go when they put it back together. Works pretty good. You get two men or three men up there, goes pretty fast. In opening up the roof, we can see that we can access that hole around that chimney pipe. So we'll go ahead and put some tin around that to close that up. Um, sometimes you just got to look for alternative ways. It's just about impossible to get in from the inside. We'll be able to seal this one up from the outside. So you can see they put little spacer sticks in to hold that roof metal up. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to get the tube in to blow the insulation in there.
Sometimes when you open the mobile home roofs on these, the, the, the wires is exposed to the outside wall. So when you uh, go down to put your tin back down, silicone it back, and be, just be careful where you run your screws because uh, we use an inch and a half screw, sometimes a two inch, and that might go right through the uh, two by two or the plate, and then you could hit your, damage your uh, wire. So this one here, there's, uh, there's a bunch right here on this side. There's one on this corner. So just be aware of it when you uh, put your tin back down. And then I just marked it on top so we know that wire. Or you can mark it on the side too if you if you want to. And uh, so normally you just have to watch that, that kind of stuff. Hi, I'm Ken Berg from Weatherization out of Jamestown, North Dakota. And now we're to have our different, uh, we're going to do the ceiling on the mobile home first. And here we're going to uh, use different pipes, uh, different sizes, uh, whatever works best for the uh, procedure. Uh, we have two inch and then we're down to uh, inch and a quarter pipe. We have the plastic pipe, uh, metal pipe, whatever is easier once you get inside underneath. Um, sometimes there's not a whole lot of room. So you just have to go at what, what works the best. Okay, this is our uh, insulated machine, the Krendel 11, 1100. We're going to, uh, we got our fiberglass up in the nose and we're going to, uh, got our hose hooked up and the gate is set. Now we might have to adjust the gate a little bit uh, until we get the, when we get the feel of this. Uh, right now we're at three and uh, possibly we can go up to maybe four, three and a half, four. Uh, we're running a three inch hose and then our gate or air usually have uh, the air wide open on this so it just uh, you have to experiment with it a little bit uh, just to make sure everything's going good so there'll be a guy in here all the time dumping bags and uh, checking the machine so we have a remote control switch on this so we don't have to run back and forth turning it on, turning it off, so, uh, which is a pretty good deal there. Uh, we run off a, a generator sometimes, and right now we're off a, a power off the house, which is a 220 power, and that'll feed, that's enough to pull our Crandall uh, machine, and our saws, saws also. So we'll try it here and see how it goes, and uh, we might have to, like I said, adjust a little bit, with our air, with our gate. You don't want to force too much air in there, so if you do, you might possibly blow out the ceiling, so you don't want that to happen. Okay, here we're gonna use a uh, inch and a quarter fill tube. Uh, we tried a two inch uh, tube on this, and it didn't go because there's a center brace in, this, in the trailer house. Uh, we tried, uh, it just it just wouldn't go so you have to downsize sometimes to an inch and a quarter uh, tube and uh, it does work it's just a little bit slower process um, and you just have to uh, now here we're putting fiberglass in the ends so you don't want to uh, back it up and have it shoot all over just a precaution so you don't want it all over the yard And now the tube was able to uh, go in between the uh, braces in, on the inside uh, for the center beam. Normally you wouldn't have that center beam on a lot of this. Uh, you could take a two inch tube, plastic tube, metal tube, whatever, and it'll go all the way over to the other end. And what you want to do here is get it over as far as you can and pack pack the end and then you want to uh, feather the inside just feather it in on the middle and then when you get to this end Nick will show you how to uh, when you get to the end don't fill it full because uh, it'll bulge up too high and you'll have a heck of a time getting your tin back down to screw it back down there's about eight inches of uh, clearance in the middle uh, about two two to three inches on the sides and a lot of this is just hearing it, feeling the tube. Uh, you can't see none of this, so you just got to be careful. And I 
can almost hear it coming about in the middle of it right now. And just be careful on the inside. Uh, we checked earlier before we started this. We checked the ceiling, uh, checked the client, uh, uh, see if there's any been any uh, previous leakage uh, with with rain. Uh, if they've had a problem with that, mark the spot with a pencil or a marker, and then come back when you get all done, or go inside. But sometimes you might have to brace the ceiling up. Um, you might have to fix, uh, maybe put sheetrock inside. But just be careful of those uh, weak areas. And always check around the water heaters, the uh, furnace. Uh, sometimes there's holes that have to be patched. And then once in a while, I'll have a guy run in every so often just to check. Okay, we're getting pretty close to the end, so. Uh, okay. There we shut it off and uh, we'll check it here and see. Okay, there's a little bit and uh, like I say, you don't want to come way to the end because uh, you're going to lift this tin up and then it's going to be really difficult to set it back down. So a lot of times we'll either cut a piece of fiberglass and set in here. You don't want any voids in this. If you get any voids in it, you're going to get frost build up and uh, you're going to get all your heat loss up to these ends. And it's pretty hard to caulk any of that, foam it, so we usually just cut a little piece of fiberglass and just set in there. You don't want, you don't want a dense packet. And uh, yeah, that looks good. We'll just keep going down uh, until you get to a certain spot. And then we'll put back, we'll put our drip cap back on. We'll uh, show you how we screw it down, glue it, um, silicone it, and seal it up. As you can see, we, we've got it all fiberglassed, and then uh, underneath here, we, we packed with, uh, we cut little pieces of fiberglass to pack the ends real tight. So it's not real high or real tight in there. Lift it up here a little bit. Okay, all this part is done, and now what we want to do is put a nice bead of silicone along here, right along the edge. And uh, silicone works the best on this. You can either use clear, white, whatever color you want, because you're not going to see it. I'll go a little ways here. And you can only go as far. Don't overlap yourself on this, because you got to come back and start with your other panel over here. And then you got have to start insulating on this side yet. So just. Go, don't go all the way. Okay, the next step is just to push it down now, back to where it was. Sometimes you might want to take a little hammer and, and straighten it out or bend it back down. Here's one spot here that's kind of bad, so we'll pound that down a little bit. Okay, and I had my wires marked right there, the spot here. So you can either nail this back on, we're just tacking it for now. Use your gun. Tack it back on there. Just uh, doesn't have to be that many that many screw or nails on there. Okay, I'll get a couple over here yet. Just to tack it. Pound that down. Some places you might have to uh, pound it down a little. Okay, one more spot here. And we can take this, our uh, drip edge, and try and line the holes up. Works best for where they were. Okay, there's your screws there. And try not miss any. Try and get every every uh, screw hole you can, and that will that will tighten itself up too. The roof line.
Okay. We'll just screw this section on here. Then there's one more step that we normally do. Okay, this little section right here, I marked it with the wires. I didn't really want to put my screws in there. I could put them at an angle, um, but I don't want to go straight through. So something like this, probably a six inch strip, I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to silicone it on top all the way along here now. But just to be safe, I'm going to leave this spot. This is a, you can get any, any silicone sealant would work. This is a, a Sasco product. Uh, or you can do uh, your silicone caulking on top like this. Put a nice thick bead along there and uh, make sure it uh, covers everything. Or go ahead and seal that with your, try that stuff there, Mike. set up in about an hour and uh, sometimes we'll do the um, the seams it depends you know if, if it's had history of leakage or uh, there's holes pinholes or whatever we'll hit those uh, this one isn't too bad we might do along this edge and then Mike will show you here pretty soon he'll he'll get up and uh, make sure you walk on a rafter when you go up on these and then uh, he'll do this um, bathroom vent silicone around all the vents and um, the furnace vent, water heater vent, and like I say, anything that looks bad will we'll hit that. Yep. That's it for another episode of WX TV. We've covered three different techniques for insulating attic spaces in mobile homes. Stay tuned for other techniques that cover walls and bellies. And thanks for watching. WX TV your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.